All right, good evening, everybody. So in our last video, I showed you how you can control when your multi plus two inverters utilize grid power and when they utilize battery power. Well, I wanna take that a little further tonight and show you how I have configured my system to let me control when my system charges from the grid and when it doesn't charge from the grid. So let's get started. And so to control when this grid charging is turned on and turned off, we're gonna be doing some of the similar things we did last week. So we're gonna end up making a physical connection between the multi-plus primary inverter and the servo. We're going to be adding an assistant and we're gonna be looking at how we can turn charging on and off using the servo display and even in the VRM. So like last time, we're going to be utilizing a cat cable to make our connection. And we're going to be just using another pair in our cat cable. So we're gonna be using the white, blue, and the blue line. And this time, instead of using aux one, we're gonna be using the aux two connection. And so down here on the servo, you can see relay two. We have our white, blue, and blue lines coming in to our calm and normally closed connections for the relay. Again, very simple wiring connections, just like we ended up doing for the AC input connection. So we're gonna jump over to the computer and I'm gonna show you another way that you can program these multi plus two inverters without the need of the Mark III to USB device connected directly to the inverters. So if you have a servo or a Raspberry Pi Venus OS device connected to your inverters, you can open up the VRM and you can come over to device list. And on the device list, it's going to show you all the different devices that you have connected to your servo. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and you see this remote VE configure area. So we're gonna press that button. That's gonna pull all the different devices in your environment and try to get a configuration file for those inverters. And so you can see here, we've got our configurable service, the multi plus inverters. We're gonna actually download this file and this is gonna package everything together into one VE config file that we'll be able to open up. So it has generated that file for me. I'm gonna save it to my desktop and I'm going to tap on it to open it up and it automatically opens up the VE bus system configurator. And we can see we've got our L1 and our L2 here. And so we're gonna to connect to it and open it up exactly like we did when we hardwired directly into the inverters. We'll right click VE config multi and it's going to launch the VE config program for us. With all of the current settings on the inverter, the one thing you'll notice is on the left-hand side, it doesn't have the active information, but that's because this is just a downloaded file of your inverter configuration. So there's gonna be a couple things that we're gonna to need to do in VE config to control when charging is turned on and turned off. So we're gonna to go to the charging charger tab first. We wanna make sure that enable charger is turned on. Now, in my initial video on the VE config software, I had turned that off because I didn't know any other way of how to not have it charge from the grid when the grid was connected. So you're gonna wanna turn this on, make sure this is turned on, and then you're gonna wanna set your charge parameters, your absorption voltage, your float voltage. And so what I ended up doing was I ended up coming down to this charge current down here and I set it to zero. And so even though charger is enabled, it will not charge because the charge current is down to zero. And now we're gonna switch over to the assistance tab. And this may look familiar for those that you saw in my last video, and you saw this charge current control assistant. And this is the assistant that we're gonna be using to control when the charger actually turns on. And so this assistant is actually going to change what the charge current value is. And so I'm gonna start the assistant and we see this welcome page with the remarks, this assistant must be programmed in all master units. 
when it's a program into another unit, you'll get a notification the assistant is not needed. So that's nice. And that's something that I've even forgot to mention the past few times that we've talked about assistants. On this main welcome display, it's going to kind of give you some information about what the assistant is. And then if there's any specific information that you need to know about where that assistant needs to be loaded. So we hit next and we're going to have this change the charge current based on the voltage on the auxiliary input two. And the signal should be connected to this multi quattro. And so that's, that's that wire that we connected over here the blue, white, and then the blue into aux two. And so now we have it set the DC charge current to zero amps when the voltage is lower than one volt, and then set the DC charge current, I have it set to 20 amps right now, when the voltage is higher than four volts. And then we'll hit the next button, and then disable the charger when the charge current should be zero. I checked that. And then that's it. And so when the auxiliary input closes, there is a voltage that's detected across those two terminals or those two pins, which then tells the assistant, okay, I'm above four volts, now bump up the charging up to 20 amps. And then the AC input current limit that's on this general tab, this is based on how much power you're going to allow to come into your system. Right now I have a 60 amp breaker on my AC input, and so my current limit is set to 60 amps. Now this VE config file that you've gotten from the VRM, when you close this window, it's going to automatically save your changes to that file that you ended up downloading from the VRM. And so we'll just close it, it automatically saved the change, and then if you had any changes to make on your leg two inverter, you could do those here. And then as soon as you close the VE bus system configurator, it's gonna save that file. And then you're gonna come back to your VRM and you're gonna upload that file that you made your changes to. And then it's going to push those changes up to your inverters. Be aware when you're changing your configuration, there is a potential for the inverters to recycle. So just, be aware you might lose power when that happens. And it's recommended that if you're gonna do this when, across the VRM, that you have some kind of backup power on your internet connection so that you don't lose that internet connection if your power does have to cycle. And you can see here the system has been configured. So we've made our connection between the Multi Plus and the Serbo. We have gone into the software and programmed the aux input too. So now while we're still on this computer, I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can turn charging on and turn it off. And actually, before I do that, I need to show you how to have the servo know that that relay is supposed to be a manual switch. So we're gonna to come to the servo display real quick and we're gonna go into the settings and drill down to the settings page. We're gonna to go to that relay area that we went to last time. And then we're gonna to go to relay two. And you wanna make sure that that is manual. And then I came down to the relay name and I named it AC charge. And then I also checked this box here, show relay two in the overview. So we'll go back to our main page. And so the overview is actually this page over here just to the right. So you got to swipe to the side and you can see here, we've got relay to my named AC charge and then manual is currently off. And so before we turn this on, I want to come back to this main page just to again, show you we're in grid mode right now. It's been a nasty day, uh, cloudy, rainy, haven't gotten much charge at all. You can see I'm at 24%. My AC input is turned on. And so now we're gonna come back here. And so I am going to turn this relay on and that's going to start ramping up my charging. So turn that on, come back to the main page. And now you see my AC connection is starting to ramp up and it will be putting 20 amps into the battery. And so keep in mind that that 20 amp setting, that's 20 amps per inverter going into the battery. And then I can come back over here, turn it off. 
and charging ramps back down and turns off. And then if we come over here to the VRM, we've got our switch controls up here in the top right hand corner again, just like where, what we had for turning the AC input on and off. We can tap that and we can scroll down to the bottom to our switches. Now, the only thing that I don't care for is the fact that it doesn't copy the name from my servo to the VRM. So I called it AC input charge or AC charge or something like that. And the name in the VRM still says relay two. So you can see in this background here, we're at 568 watts. If I tap this, it gives you this confirmation, making sure that you didn't accidentally hit that switch. Gives you five seconds and then it actually enables it. And we can see in the VRM, we are now cranking up the charging again. And then the same thing coming back to turn it off. And you can confirm right away. And then charging starts to ramp down. So a nice, easy way to be able to control when charging is turned on and turned off. I mean, for me, most of the time, I don't want charging from the grid. I want to let solar do all the charging. And so I'll switch over to AC input till it gets up to 30% and then it switches back to the battery and then hopefully solar will step in and continues to charge that battery even more. But nine times out of 10, I really don't wanna enable charging unless I know that, you know, some bad storms coming that has the potential to knock out my backup grid connection. So hopefully this helps. I know it's a, a short and simple way. It's kind of nice being able to, you know, even be away from home, pull up the VRM on your phone and say, oh, you know, we've had a storm, storm coming. I wanna charge my batteries. And from that standpoint, if you've set up your system like I did in the last video, you can time that generator to run for six hours. If you know you wanna charge this thing up a lot more, tell it to do a timed switch to the generator for six hours and then turn on that charger relay and you'll have your batteries charging for six hours. So with that, I'm gonna let y'all go. Uh, y'all stay safe. I can't believe I have to say this again. Stay warm <laughs> and we'll catch up with you later.